Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. We're going to be testing out the Cormorant Navy issue in the Abyss. This is the first time I'm ever piloting a Cormorant. I just loaded it right now for the absolute first time. I know what a beast of a ship this looks like. It looks so much more advanced than the classical Cormorant with all these cool armor plates and camo. So we're going to test this out in T2 Abyss. I think these new Navy destroyers can be suitable for T2 Abyss if you bling them out enough. I feel like T1 is a bit too basic because you can already do that with a lot of other ships like Azor Frigates, Pirate Frigates, and they will earn a lot more ISK than the destroyers will as well. So what we'll do here is we're going to do T2 Exotic, because I think T2 Exotic will be fitted for uh, the Cormorant, because it will be doing kinetic damage with its railguns. Could also perhaps do use the Firestorm, but Firestorm is always a little bit more difficult than Kinetic, because or the Exotic sites, just because of how uh, the NPCs, they have more HP due to the Firestorm buff, and also that fire uh, or the thermal resist fire resist is reduced in uh, the firestorm site and that is a damage type which is often a very prevalent in the abyss so we'll be taking a ton of damage as well so i think exotics overall will be a safer choice we're going to go around sniper style with the kaldari navy antimatter railguns hopefully it'll go good the cormorant navy issue has got a special bonus compared to the normal cormorant it's got a shield boost bonus so it's shield booster is going to be more powerful than the usual shield booster and we're not in a particularly high blink fit with with some semi blink semi blink got a corelli b-type 5 mn public fleet small shield extender and a public fleet small cat battery the only thing that could be blinked is the shield booster and i didn't do that because bling shield boosters are very expensive but it could be an option to go for a bling shield booster because it provides so much more shields i think a pithy a type small shield booster gives about 50 something hp per second with this ship we can even test here small shield booster if we rip out this clarity ward and put a pithy you see here 57 hp per second we are not as cap stable but we're not cap stable even with this tech one one as well uh we'll form a fleet with our character here basic fleet i have a feeling that we might go pop if we get caught because we do not have as much tank as our uh, friend the Quasa Navy she did. There's a risk that we can go pop, but we also have very good range, so we'll see. Got a bit of a mix of buffer and shield boosting because we've got that small shield extender because I was a bit unsure what to put in that other uh, mid slot that we had to spare. Okay, Charybdis Tyrannos. We'll go towards the bio competitive cache with an MWD. And honestly, I think the MWDs actually with these uh, destroyers is probably not the best idea because oh, we're taking so much damage because we our signature race becomes massive. Oh no, I think we might go pop here. We need to uh, get under Kribbs' gun straight away. Just forget about this. Okay, we can grab it. Look at that. Okay, grabbed it. <laughs> and then we'll orbit Kribbs perhaps 15. Oh, that was a ton of damage we took. <laughs> because we've got a massive signature radius, bigger than cruisers when we've got an MWD in this uh, destroyer. Azor frigates can use MWDs. M one, because they are a lot smaller, so they're not going to be as big of a signature when you're using your MWD. But plus that they have a bonus that makes their MWD signature radius penalty be even smaller than it otherwise would be. So they're very ideal MWD boats. These destroyers, I feel like they might not be so suitable for MWDs based on how much damage we're taking. The only thing is that if I'm using a 1MN afterburner, then I will be as slow as a cruiser. And that is going to cause problems because then I'll have to face tank stuff. And the, I don't feel like these destroyers have got enough tank to face tank stuff. They can tank, but they can't tank as much, which I think they will be suitable to face tank stuff, which put these guys in a bit of a dilemma like okay i can't kite but i can't tank at the same time either do a decent amount of damage but it's still a bit rough you can see a 275 dps so it's a bit lower than the yeah it's actually not as high as i thought it's a bit lower than the uh, coercer navy issue with uh, the multi-frequency so hmm this might actually not be such a good ship I was thinking that this was going to be good because this was in an exotic site, but the DPS is actually not particularly high. The shield boosting can also be pretty high as well, but uh, just because it's like shield boosters can be very overpowered when you bling them, they do so much HP per second. Uh, unlike armor repairs, which I don't find them to do as much increased tank like the shield boost. I just find that the bling shield boosters tend to be a bit more OP than the 
bring the armor repairs. So I was thinking it was going to be very powerful, but I don't know. It doesn't feel like it's too powerful. Okay. Herbis is soon down either way. Able to avoid a lot of the damage, that's good. I mean, we could perhaps put like a 1MN. 1MN after burn, and then maybe a medium shield booster. Because then we will have a bit more fitting room to spare. But the problem is the capacitor then. We've got a capacitor issue. The capacitor is not able to be fitted. Dual cat batteries maybe will give us good, better capacitor. Uh, 81 HP per second is nice to see. But it's uh, going to be difficult. It's difficult to get that fitting and also the capacitor as well. It doesn't look too nice here. I wonder if we could do thucker cat battery. Thucker. A small cat battery. No, it's difficult. Need more power grid. Devoted night. Oh, this is. If we can survive this, it's going to be a good sign. But I don't think we will. We'll try kiting these guys because you can kite them. We'll take out the frigates, I think. Or can we orbit at? No, we do not want to orbit close because we're going to be absolutely annihilated. Let's go for this. For these frigates move a little bit to the side. Oh, this uh, cormorant does not seem to have a... Yeah, look at that glassing shot. Yeah, I don't think it's going to go good here because the EM damage these guys do is also pretty deadly. I think if we keep the range, perhaps the Devoted Knight doesn't do a lot of damage because at long range, we are able to avoid a lot of the damage. Oh, no. Pull range, pull range. No, overheat that stuff. Come on. Oh, wait, the mids. Come on, can we do it? We're just able to orbit this guy at a steady 30, perhaps. We should be able to avoid all damage. Oh, no. Structure. We're in structure now. It's, it's really difficult because this guy... Oh, no. It seemed like uh, the, our range was enough to keep range from the Devoted Knight. So we sort of had to be in its range. Because the Cormorant Navy issues uh, build I had with the Kaldari Navy at 20, 30, 2 fall off. And we were at like 30 kilometers range. After 30 we wouldn't do no damage at all. So we were sort of forced to be within its range and we were unable to tank. So that did not go good. I think it's a lot to do with that we undergunned the shield booster. Probably we should have focused more on the shield booster because that is what this ship is focused on. It's focused on being a good shield boosting ship. Um, a medium shield booster, for example, if we could somehow fit it to be cap stable or just a blinged out shield booster. Just focus more on the shield booster because uh, that's the whole point of this ship. It's made to be a shield boosting ship, not like a... If it had, say, resist bonuses, then it would affect like our shield booster and medium sh shield extender. But on this build... Our shield extender is not really getting any inherent bonuses from anything apart from our ship naturally being a shield ship. Uh, the shield booster, I think, is the most important bonus to take advantage of. So probably we could do something like a shield booster. If we put, for example, a pithy A-type small shield booster. Remove this. Cat magic. Yeah, we can fit in now. And we do not want to have that. We want to have one MN. One MN. Yeah, so we like this. I mean, we can we cap stable then. Two cat batteries as well. 57 HP per second. I wonder if we can remove them now. Something like that would be good. But I'm not sure if we would be able to f face tank stuff here, even because we've got pretty bad resists. The resists are not that great. You have to remember, we're using an expensive ship now, so suddenly it changes the whole like ballpark or the playing field we're using to farm these T2 sites. And I don't think it's particularly worth it. Again, same thing as the quest before. It wasn't really worth it to use an expensive ship when you're doing the T2 exotic solo, because the ISK is not really going to be worth it. Oh, our ship is invisible. I've been finding it as being bugging out recently where my ship is invisible when I die. Uh, but Cormorant, Navy issue, attempting the T2 exotic abyss, tank wasn't there. And DPS was okay, but could be better. A retribution would do much better in these kinds of sites. Uh, or just another assault frigate like a hawk, for example, would do much better. And I think that these Navy destroyers so far don't seem to be too promising in these abyss sites, T2 solo at least. But maybe my fits could be adjusted if you've got any recommendations of fits to improve upon to make them more viable for the T2 solo abyss for these Navy destroyers. Please let me know in the comments down below. Uh, but so far it doesn't seem to be 
that promising. It's like the same conclusion that I always come to when using destroyers in the Abyss almost all the time. There's some exceptions like the Jackdaw, but uh, usually just the destroyers, they don't have enough speed, speed tank, they don't have enough tank to tank. And then the capacity is always something that is troublesome in the middle of everything that makes everything worse. So, unfortunate end, but we learned something new at least that this build didn't work until next time when we try something else. So I think it's enough for now. Cormorant, Navy issue in the T2 Exotic Abyss. Hope you guys enjoyed, or hope you at least learned something new. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. I'll catch you guys later.